Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, everybody, how you doing? And welcome to the show. It's another great day. I hope you're feeling good and looking good and feeling good to get out of bed and let everybody know the show is on. Now, listen, with everything that's going on, how are you getting your message out there? What are you doing to really get your message out there and the best way to do it? Well, my friend coming on right now is going to show you how to market, how to get your message out there, what to do. And it seems like it's really simple, but you just got to know how to do it. So please welcome to the show my special guest. Hey, how you doing, my friend? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What's going on, man? Not much. That's good. Where are you calling in from? Uh, Baltimore County, Maryland. Uh, how's the weather out there right now? A uh, little chilly. Wish it would be a little warmer. That makes two of us, buddy. I woke up this morning. I was like, hey, this don't feel like summer yet. It's coming. It's getting right. there. But it's not there yet. So tell us a little bit more about what you do, a little bit more of your background. Growing up, where you grew up. Okay. Um, yeah. So I grew up in eastern North Carolina. Um, I ended up going to graduate school in northern Virginia. Um majored in creative writing with an emphasis in poetry. So I kind of assumed that I would be waiting tables the rest of my life. Uh, but uh, my first summer uh, after my first year at, at uh, college, grad school, I realized I did not want to wait tables. Uh, I came home physically exhausted and psychologically drained from that. So uh, I, I, I give kudos to a lot of people who, who do that as a profession. But for me, I realized that wasn't going to work. So I ended up in an office job. I worked at a telecom startup in the DC area. And I was in charge of some sales and marketing and that grew into PR. And I was having to send uh, press releases out uh, through a fax machine. We had like 180 journalists to send to and the fax machine only held 100 numbers. And it was a brand new state of the art machine. And so I would program it with 100 numbers, hit send. It would take all day to send that. Mm -hmm. And then the next day I would delete those numbers, put 80 or 90 in so I could do the second batch. And we started to get a lot of calls from journalists saying, hey, you sent us all these telecom numbers and statistics. Could you email me that as a Word doc? I could cut and paste that much easier. And a light bulb went off and I said, people should be doing this through uh, email, not through uh, faxing. And that's sort of where I uh, launched e-releases. I spent about a year contacting journalists and saying, hey, would you get in uh, my database? I'm going to be emailing you press releases. And they thought it was really cool. Now, this was 24. 23 years ago uh, so uh, it's changed a bit since then uh, and over the years PR Newswire approached us and said hey you should also send your releases over the Newswire through us and I was like my clients can't afford to spend a thousand dollars to move a release nationally over PR Newswire and yeah. so we worked with them um, I, I went and met their uh, editorial office and saw that overnight they had staffers there in editorial that were waiting for breaking news because a fortune 500 company Company might have uh, a recall or something important happens uh, right. in the middle of the night. So someone's got to be there. And I said, I'll schedule my releases for next day so that uh, all these uh, releases can be set up by you guys and that you have to put it in style and put it in the machine and everything to send mm -hmm. it out. Uh, you can do that overnight and it wouldn't cost you any additional labor. So we sort of created a win-win between us um, where everyone gets a custom national distribution through PR Newswire, but they don't have to spend it thousand dollars or more uh, that they normally would and uh, we also include the email distribution that we've always been um, known for and so uh, my real reason for being here is to help small businesses and startups uh, you know be able to get their messaging out to the media and hopefully when the media sees that they turn it into an article because that is you know at the end of the day what uh, we're, we're looking for uh, taking the press release and copy and pasting it onto a website doesn't help very much but mm -hmm. uh, when someone writes an article about you uh, you know that can be really valuable not just for SEO but for reputation credibility the traffic you generally get from an article uh, converts very, very well because a lot of people want to do business with that company that's in the article. They have this warm feeling that the article created. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's sort of like an implied endorsement that happens on behalf of the publication. And, uh, you know, those types of customers tend to be the most loyal and, uh, you know, most adverse to price shopping. They want to work with you. They don't want to open a new window and see, can I get this cheaper on Amazon or something like that? 
They want cre- they want credibility and they want somebody that <clears throat> they could relate to. If they can read your story, how you got started, what you got started, they go, I like this guy. Okay. I went to the same thing. Oh, he, he grew up here. Oh, that's just around the corner from me. Okay, I'll try them out. It gives much more information and, you know, feel more comfortable to go spend your money. Right. Because, you know, uh, journalists are wanting to share your story. So many people, when they do press releases, um, try to be all business and matter of fact. And a lot of times uh, our, our clients that tend to do really well with, say, Fast Company or Inc. Magazine or Entrepreneur Magazine are the ones that share the ugly side of business, you know, how uh, they, for Thanksgiving, they didn't go to the mothers that year. They stayed and sat around the dining room table, uh, putting packages in boxes so that they could send it, uh, send it out to their customers. Uh, those are the types of stories that, uh, you know, resonate with people and people identify with the growing pains that happen with the business, the little catastrophes, the obstacles that you overcame. And uh, so many people don't want to include, you know, all of those things in their history. Uh, but the media likes that and the media, uh, you know, relates to it because they know their readers relate to those stories. It's a true story. And that's the thing. That's what grabs you. You don't want to hear the norm that you hear all the time. You want the real deal. They're like, ah. Oh. These guys didn't have a Thanksgiving. No, yeah, they're still at work. They're making us feel good. That, that I like that company. They, those are good employees. That's a that's a grab you story, sure. and that's what you want to do is grab them. So I definitely like the the thought behind it and the process. But here's a question for you: How do you know when to put out a press release? When's a good time to put out a press release? The a good time is when you have a major uh, milestone. Um, let's say that uh, you're launching a new product, that would be a great time to send something out. Um, let's say that uh, you just got like bestseller status for your book or something like that, um, or you, you know, a major accomplishment ha- happened. Um, you know, we've seen uh, you know, companies win awards and they wanna get that out to their industry and things like that. Those are all great opportunities. But that being said, you can make your own opportunity as well. Um, one of the things that the media really resonates with is data, stats, numbers, statistics. So uh, we have uh, clients that just manufacture surveys and studies all the time. One uh, clutch.co does reviews of lots of different industries uh, on their website and they drive the traffic to their website through uh, surveys on each specific industry. And they've gotten really good about asking, you know, interesting questions, but they also throw in a couple of quirky questions. Uh, and often those are the ones that get picked up. So like if you were sending something out to, uh, uh, you know, HVAC in uh, industry professionals, one of the things that you could have is the regular questions, but then you have an open-ended one that says, what's the strangest thing you found in someone's uh, HVAC? system and it could be like a boa constrictor or you know yeah. s- something really bizarre and those are the types of things where uh it's not unusual for an article to appear of a uh, new study determines five strangest things found in uh, a mm-hmm. person's uh you know uh venting system or something like that uh, so people like those kinds of stories and you can and you know they'll include some of the other interesting statistics in there but they lead with the ones that are a little quirky or strange and so if you can do that uh, a survey or study of your customers or your leads. Generally, journalists like to see 100 or more respondents um, to for a study to stand up. And if you don't have those kinds of numbers, you can partner with a, a, a small t- uh, trade association. Uh, they don't get a lot of love because uh, the major trade associations generally get all that, uh, but they do have a lot of members. So you could ask them to send the survey out to their members and uh, they'll often do it on social media as well as perhaps even email it uh, uh, the link to your survey out to their members. And sometimes uh, it's an opportunity to co-brand because you aligning yourself with that trade association gives you more credibility when you do your press release and uh, creates a win-win between you and the trade association. So um, that's a great way to get numbers for a survey um, or you know a study or something that you're doing. And, and you make your own news by you know producing the study and coming back with some interesting stats that only you have that you can then share. All right, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to dive into your website. We're going to dive a little bit more on press releasing. Now, for me, I always thought, you know, you have an event come out, you send out a press release that this gala is happening, you know, trying to raise funds. Or a press release is when a grant, uh, you're, you're opening up a store, a grand opening of a new store or something like that. But what happens to like a business that's been into business for a while that doesn't have any 
milestone coming up. There's nothing new. Can we still do a press release? Let us know when we get right back. Stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. CMJ Entertainment is a one-stop shop. CMJ Entertainment helps people do any type of events, and it's a marketing tool as well. So we'll cover everything from start to finish. If it's a wedding, we'll make sure your wedding is over the top. And if it's an event, we make sure that everybody gets information at the end of the day. Give us a call at 416-414-8964 or online at cmjent.com. Yes, we're back live with my good friend, and we're talking about how to get the word out there, doing press releases. If you got information, you know, the question I asked before we went to break is, you know, like myself, someone has been into business for a while. Uh, we've gotten our awards, but that happened like two years ago. How do we do we still can we send a press release talking about awards two years ago? It has to be current. What is a press release? What is, what what it, can we send it for? Okay, so um, basically, I wouldn't send out a release about an award you had a couple of years ago. Um, I would say that when you do a release, you have an about section, uh, often called the boilerplate, that's usually at the bottom of the release that has like a few sentences, four to eight sentences about what your company is and all about. And that's a good place you can mention those awards so that uh, it's still there and you're still promoting the fact that you're award winning. Um, but I would stick to something that's new and relevant. Um, Sometimes you can look at, um, you know, what is it that is really hot right now in your industry, as well as what are the what are they not talking about? Um, we took a local carpet company in New Jersey uh, after a series of releases that didn't do well, and we did a press release about them combating um, the big box home improvement stores, and they got picked up in all of the floor uh, trade publications, and I think there was around 10, and I didn't even realize there were that many, and they all picked it up because no one was talking about marketing and how local carpet companies, which make up the bulk of these trade publications, members, uh, subscribers, uh, are having to compete against like Home Depot and Lowe's. So this was a, a press release that really resonated because no one was talking about it. And we did subsequent releases on marketing that did extremely well because that was a blind spot that the trade uh, industry wasn't doing a good job covering. And uh, so that's an opportunity as well for you to sort of make, make your own news and get out there. Um, sometimes when you do talk about something that's hot right now, it's hard to stand out because a lot of people are joining the conversation. Uh, but if you're saying something that's contrarian, goes against a little bit what other people are saying, uh, you can stand out a little bit more because they want to include you know all perspectives, and that's one that's not you know one's out there saying the things that you're necessarily saying, and uh, other things that you can do you know really well is uh, can you heighten the conversation in a way? If everybody's talking about something that's trending right now, can you turn it in a different direction? Like, uh, you know, what this means for small businesses uh, uh, or a segment within your industry or community and, and make it a little more relevant. Well, here's a question. <clears throat> One page, two page, a hundred words. What is a good press release to send to somebody? I've seen press releases where it's just a quick, Hey, you just want you to know about this. And then I've seen the novel chapter one, chapter two. What is a good press release? I think 400 to 500 words is adequate for 95% of the press releases that are out there. Um, I think that if you give them a, a good amount of information, they can build a story around it. I think that if it's just a paragraph or so, if they're going to write an article, or something of substance, they're not going to have enough information there. So they're going to have to go to your website, hunt for it, try to find old press releases, perhaps, or something like that, or just give up. Um, but yeah, that you, being, you don't yeah, want that. <laughs> right. And that being said, there are instances where a longer press release is required. So if you're, you know, like my old telecom, uh, uh, company, we release a lot of st numbers and statistics. So our releases were longer, but we were producing a lot of data and tables and things like that within the release. So um, there is an argument to be made that there is room for a larger press release. But that being said, the majority of press releases don't need to be extremely long. Uh, you know, th uh, even 350 words, 300 words is probably adequate for a lot of them. And are we using the five W's, what, where, why, why, and who, or like what, if, yep. what, what else we... What else are we sticking in there just to make sure? I always say include a compelling quote. 
Um, a quote is a great opportunity to anchor yourself into a story. I've seen a lot of mediocre stories come out, but there's a really fascinating quote and an article gets written. And I think a lot of times it's because that quote is so darn good. They want to build a story around it and, uh, and tell that story. Well, here it is. I asked you that question for a reason because I can't write. There's no way I'm writing no article or nothing to send them. They're going to be like, who is this guy? What is this guy writing? So it comes down to my next page. Yes, right here. It is stressful. We don't know what to write. We don't know what the keywords is to put it in there. So let's get to the nitty gritty. What can you do for us? Well, um, we offer writing services. We also have samples on the website as well for those who want to do it themselves. Um, the writing process is, you know, we work with business owners the way they want to work. Uh, we have a questionnaire, but some people are just really busy and just want to send you a link to a website so we can work from that. Some people like to talk over the phone and, and share what they have going on because, you know, they, 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 they feel they talk better than, than write. So we're willing to have the writer uh, call you. It's really how you envision you want the process to be for you. And so we get those releases, we write them up, uh, we send it to you to review. And then once you're happy with it, we schedule it for distribution. Um, you know, but that being said, we do work with a lot of people who already have written a release and they're just wanting us to get it out there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're uh, all in one shop. We're willing to do a little bit of everything for you uh, to try and help you get that release out. A lot of customers find having us write that first release is really valuable, but then they feel pretty comfortable after that, that they can sort of, you know, take the reins and, uh, you know, write subsequent releases. Yeah. So get it out there. 410-931-2966. That's 931-2966. Give them a call. If you're thinking about doing a press release, you have something big going on. Maybe you're, you know, during COVID, you, you've opened up a new shop. You want to get the word out there. Anniversary, 5, 10, 25 years, something new. Or maybe you discovered something in the industry that you want to get out and talk about. You know, who knows? This is the gentleman to, talk, to contact and get a hold of. Now, how long does a press release take to get out? Well, we can usually schedule it for next business day. Um, you know, once we once we have the release from you, uh, our editors look it over, make sure it's in the right style and format for the release uh, for the newswire, um, because there are some qualifications as to what that looks like. Uh, but uh, generally, they're looking for you've got the headline, you've got Dateline with a city and state. It doesn't have to be where you're located, but a lot of people do put that there. Um, uh, some people who are authors prefer to put New York or Los Angeles or something like that, but it's up to you where, what, the, what that city and state is. And then you're going to have a media contact as well, which is usually a name, a phone number, and an email address. And uh, the Newswire does require the phone number just because what happens invariably is a journalist will write an article, it's going to print in the two hours, and the managing editor says, I'm not sure that's a little muddy. Are you clear that that's exactly what they meant? And so they have to get back and otherwise the story gets pulled. And so having that phone number is really important for them. So, you know, if, if, if a, a journalist is calling you, it's usually because they have questions or there's an emergency. So uh, that, <laughs> that is important to use. Yes, definitely, definitely. Now here's the other thing. How do you, how do you, go off the concept of your press release. Like, you know, your press release is out, it's out there, but you can't let it fade. How do you gain traction on your press release now? It's out there, what do you do? What's the next step so it doesn't die? Right, I say share it as much as possible. You, uh, If you want, it's great content, make sure it's on your website, create a newsroom. Uh, if you know, some of my clients get tripped up by that. So I'm like, well, you have a blog, put it on your blog at, at the very least, get this content out there. So search engines can find it. People, it's another pathway to find you and get more information about your business. Um, share it in your newsletters, um, share it on social media, uh, with your followers. Uh, I mean, this is something that you felt was important enough to send to the media. 
uh, promote it to your own people as well. Um, and you know, that it works across all the different channels. Um, you, uh, you know, whatever is important to you for social media, uh, make sure you promote it there. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing what you putting stuff out there like that to your followers can do because it gives them another avenue to say, Oh yeah, I knew about this company. Oh, they've got a new, relaunch of a product, maybe I should look into, you know, upgrading ours or something like that. So, um, it is, um, helps you stay at top of mind. Uh, the more familiarity someone sees with a company, the, the more likely they're going to use that company in the future. All right. So here's one of my last questions. When does a press release dry out? All right. After your, after your information is out there. So it, ha it came out Monday, today's Monday. You know, I'm pushing it, I'm pushing it, I'm pushing it. When does that the excitement of the press release fade? It really depends on the announcement. Um, we have in some industries that are very niche and focused, like something in biometrics, for example, uh, software or technology, it's not unusual for an article to be written about them six months, nine months down the line from the press release. Uh, okay. For a lot of people, if it's uh, something that's around a new product launch and things like that, generally that's only going to last, I would say, a couple of months, two or two to four months at the most, uh, and, and it, it's it's sort of faded um, and, and moved on. You know, but that being said, uh, you know, it, it's still alive, it still lives out there, it's still available to the journalist. Uh, sometimes they will do searches for people saying, "I want to talk to someone about a certain." Pro uh, you know, thing in the industry and they'll do keyword searches and old press releases and find a contact and just reach out and talk to you because they're looking for someone to be quoted in another story. So that's another avenue for, for people to find you by, you know, putting out releases regularly. <clears throat> so that means you're the go-to person. Right. Yeah. You want to get on that Rolodex so that yeah, they call you, you every time. There, there you go. So if you're a person in the, in the, uh, let's say the flower industry, Right. And you put up press releases about, you know, the weddings and what's going on and, you know, how flowers and everything. And then, you know, months down the line, someone else sends something and they want to say, well, you know something, this person knows they'll contact you to say, hey, I got this article. What do you think about it? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, it, it certainly does happen. Probably not with flowers so much, but with a lot of the technology <laughs> stuff, they look for experts who know an industry pretty well. So they will do a search and find and find you and reach out to you. Uh, telecom was like that. Uh, you know, we would get calls a lot of times for our comment on something that had nothing to do with the release, but they're looking for someone who is known in the telecom industry to speak. So uh, our boss was often getting quoted in publications and things like that. That had nothing to do with the press releases that we were issuing. He was just being recognized in the industry as the you know a go-to person who knew a lot about telecom. All right, people, if you're selling flowers, get into technology at the same time. <laughs> You'll get a two for one. There you go. All right. So before we let you go, 410-931-2966. All right, my friend, we have this quick game that we play. It's called Rapid Fire. Are you ready? I asked you a couple quick questions, fun questions. You just tell me what comes to your mind, and then you have one minute if you want to tell us why you chose that, but we just go, go, go. Are you ready? Sure. All right. Favorite book? Um, 80, 20 of uh, uh, marketing, sales and marketing by Perry yeah. Marshall. All right. Your first poem, if you can remember any lines that you wrote to a girl. Huh. Let's see. Uh it was something about holding your hand uh, was in the first line. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Favorite food. Let's see. Um, I love pizza. There you go. Okay. Anchovies or no anchovies? No anchovies. <sighs> All right. Watermelon. I mean, watermelon, pineapple on a pizza. I'm neutral. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Favorite TV show? Uh, the Good Doctor. What song are you singing in the shower when no one's around? Oh, that's a good one. Um, let's see. There is nothing coming to mind. I, I, I am drawing a blank there. All right. When, okay, here, put it this way. When you're writing the articles, what music do you like to listen to get you going? Oh, get you going? I have the tiger. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> All right. Favorite quote before we let you go. Oh, let's see. Uh, 
Ta, 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 ta. There was, I'm bad at remembering word for word, but there was okay. uh, one recently that came out and said something about, uh, um, don't regret your mistakes because so much of the success you've, 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 you've had was because of the, the choices you made or something like that. Right. I, I kind of resonated with that. There you go. Okay. So if that's the case, one thing that you could go back with the smaller you or the teenager in you or the last poem or something you did, what would you change? Oh, I'd buy Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy Apple and Amazon. Oh my God. The mistakes <laughs> I've made. You, you'd be right behind me, buddy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> my friend, it's been a pleasure to have you on my show and you gave us some great knowledge and for me to look into it some more because if you have something, the word is out there. You got to get the word out and that is key. So make sure you email him. I'll leave it up there. Check out his website. Ah, you know something? He ain't doing anything right now. He's waiting for you to call him. So just call him. 410-931-2966. Thank you, my friend. It's been a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you. It's been All right. Bye-bye. Now, listen, <clears throat> I didn't know about it. You know what I mean? Like when you think of press releases, you just think, oh, every time I have a show or something, you put it out. But if you listen to what he's saying, this is a key way of extending your business, a key way of getting information out there. And, you know, like they said, if there's something that you've done, you roll with it, you put it on your website and keep going. So definitely take a look and don't worry. If you're like me, I can't write something either. That's what he's there for. Okay. Call him. Say, listen, I need help with the press release. Do give him a call. He's a great guy. All right. Now, listen, if this show helped you with anything, if you find my show helpful, please support me and buy me a coffee. I only work on, you know, getting the avenues for you. It's not produced. It's not sponsored, but I work with you. So thank you so much for watching. And when you can just hit the link and buy me a coffee, support the show. Thank you for watching everybody. We'll see you next time. It's come to an end, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, head over right now to Twitter and Facebook and like, share, and get involved. Join us next time. Please be advised that this podcast is meant for educational and informational purposes only and is in no way a replacement for legal or medical advice. The opinions contained within are solely those of the interviewers and interviewees and should be received as so. Those seeking help or advice are encouraged to apply.